Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com and this is the raw edit of the week number 50 where I'm gonna do an edit Adam's gonna do an edit and then we're gonna come back together and see how we both did uh, I've looked through a bunch of what you guys have done and I will make a separate video pointing out the really really cool ones because there are some really cool ones uh, I decided this week as I said earlier to pick one of my d3s files out um, of this is Nick Perry from the band Sinai uh, basically rocking out during South by Southwest, and I thought this would be a fun photo to edit. It does piss me off that this guy's in the back here chimping. He was not making me happy. I hope he sees this video because he was running around stage until we actually got him kicked off stage because he wasn't, well, he shouldn't have been there, especially being in the background doing that type of stuff. So, you know, it... it Basically, he was just walking around going click, click, just holding his camera up, shooting without even looking through, which is a bad thing. And, uh, yeah, so let's get to editing this photo. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do the color, the black and white, or what I'm going to do yet. I know I've edited edited, did, 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 did this in the past, but I want to start back over, and I'm just going to brighten it up because it's a little uh, underexposed. So, boom, I got some exposure back in there. Let's play with some color. I usually tend to go with more of a realistic color, but it's kind of difficult with this shot with these lights because there were all of these. Oh, look at that. It came back. And there were all of these lights just pumping just color and nothing was in the front. But there, I think that brought it all the way back. I moved the tint. I'm going to pump my yellow a little bit. And I know that this isn't like an extreme, extreme edit. But my my style of editing is is more along the lines of what I saw on the stage. Now, when I was looking through a bunch of the edits that were out there, there's some really, really awesome over-the-top ones. And over-the-top isn't a bad thing. Over-the-top is just, it's extreme, it's different. And there's nothing wrong with being different and extreme. And I can't wait to point them out uh, as I go through and call them uh, and go through those files because there are some really interesting ones. So basically what I did here is I pulled back on the tint quite a bit to get it back to a realistic, almost almost a realistic white balance right here. And um, I kind of like where this is at at the moment. It's not too far over the top. It's not too yellow. It's not too blue. Yeah, I mean, you see what happens when you take out most of the yellow? He kind of You kind of lose it. You kind of don't have any more life in the face. It doesn't, it doesn't have that glow. But here, it's glowing back. So I got that. We can play with some uh, tone curves. I almost called them cone turves. <laughs> I don't like that. It's too far to the extreme for me. And yep, I am just moving sliders to see what I like. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to call this snapshot one, not four, one. And let's see what I get if I go to color. Let's see what I get if I go to black and white. Boom, black and white. I'm going to go right for a strong tone curve. Boom. Somebody was telling me about if you go to edit your, let's try what they were saying. If you go to edit your file in uh, Silver Effects Pro 2, to don't do your edit until you take it into Silver Effects. So they said leave it color, I think. We're going to see what happens. I just want to try this out. You know, I know this is going to be a little longer than normal, but I, I just think it's worth it to see what the different effects are that happen in Silver Effects Pro 2. Uh, when I take it in in full color, and let's see what happens. Oh, there's an update. Oi, it looks horrible. Oi. Oi. And then structure, like, makes it go to town. Oi. I'm not really enjoying this. I'm not really enjoying this very much, honestly. Uh, let's see if there's those presets. You know, I'm going to take this back to the very beginning. How do I cancel this? Cancel. Get out of here. Go home. Let's go back to... Where is it? Right here? Let's go back to my snapshot. I like this. I do. I'm just going to go ahead and make it... Uh, I'm going to go do my black and white again. But I'm going to stick to this. I'm not going to go into Silver Effects Pro 2 at the moment. I just want to. I just want to convert it. And, and I'm just watching. What I'm looking for is that I'm not losing his chest. That even though I pumped up the 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 the, uh, 
the exposure a little more, I took it to a point where I still have detail and tones in his chest because I didn't want to lose it. I don't mind that I'm losing part of the neck and that's and that's blowing out because look at the face and look at his chest. It's still there. So I like that. Let's move some of this and see what we've got. Boom. I like it. Oh, snap. Hello. No, thank you. And boom, we got that. So I'm going to call this number two and we're going to leave it at that. And I'm going to put both of these up against, not up against, but next to Adam's to see what he comes up with. And Adam, you are up. Adam Lerner, and welcome to Raw Edit number 50. Um, wow, number 50. That, that's kind of monumental, and I am so glad to be part of it. And I'm excited to be editing one of the uh, Furrows photos. This is a photo that Jared took of the band Sinai, um, and this is like classic rock and roll live shot um let's just take a look right here really quick and we are iso 8000 f32 one five hundredth um it's great that we're at one five hundredth because the action is frozen you've got uh this great expression and um you know there's there's plenty of detail here even at 8000 that d3s is quite a remarkable camera so um what i want to do with this image is i'm going to do some sharpening um, I'm probably going to give it some fill to open it up and you know the 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 kind of pink um, colorization that's happening here uh, because of the lighting I don't know how much I want to mess with that I mean I think intuitively going black and white is probably a way to go so I might actually do that as well but let's see what we can do with it as it stands right now so I'm just going to check the exposure here I'm masking it off just to check the overexposed areas and I don't mind that this is a little bit overexposed you know because there's still detail in there so I'm just bumping that up a tad and I'm going to op give it some fill and wow what an incredible difference that is I mean you really get a lot more of a sense of what's happening here um, I'm going to you know pump up the blacks a little bit and um, I don't want to close in his face too much you know um, I'm just using the uh, the key here to, uh, I'm sorry the the backslash key to do the before and after and uh, let's get some contrast on this. Yeah, that's that's pretty damn cool. And we're going to add some clarity to it. Oh, wow, I'm really liking that. Well, let's just see what happens with the vibrance. Uh, we don't like the vibrance. Um, it's interesting if we take a little bit of the vibrance away. I kind of like what that's done. And saturation, yeah, it's kind of cool when we take a little bit of that away as well. So I'm going to bring that down about there. And let's just see what happens when we mess with the white balance. If we just bring the tint back here, and we just lose a little bit some of that. We'll just go more greenish, and we'll lose some of that pink. You know, now we've got kind of flesh tones, but we haven't really lost the fact that there's a pink cast over this. So I, I kind of don't mind that. And let's see what happens when we go with the color temperature. Um, yeah, I'm just doing this kind of like by feel. And... You know, maybe we'll do something something around there. I'm just going to add a little bit more fill. Yeah, I like that. I like that quite a bit, quite a bit. <clears throat> Sharpening. So let's uh, just grab in onto his face here, or maybe onto the guitar, which is nice and sharp there. And we'll just bring that in. And we don't want to <clears throat> add too much sharpening because we don't want it to get, you know, exaggerate too much of the, um, of the uh, graininess here. So I'm going to mask it off here so that we can sharpen more of the edge detail and less of the texture or the grain. And we can do something like that. And that is really popping very nicely to me. Um, I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to see what happens when I add some highlight priority vignetting. And let's just see how that does. You know what? I'm not a fan of that. So we're just going to double click on that to reset it and we're going to get rid of it. I don't want to crop here because I like that the guitar is like fully in the frame here. And I love the fact that like you've got this monitor speaker here and his leg kind of mirroring that shape. And, you know, I don't really want to mess with anything like that. So as far as color, my color edit goes, maybe I'm just going to add just a touch more in the way of brightness. Um, I'm sorry, in the way of exposure. And maybe we'll just go something like that. Let's look at the before. And let's look at the after. And you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit harsh actually, you know, so I'm just gonna bring my exposure down. I'm gonna double click on that. I'm gonna reset that. And I'm just gonna bring the fill down a little bit. 
And, you know, maybe we'll just do something, something around there. Maybe just drop the contrast down just a little bit of a touch. All right, so that's going to be my color. So we're going to just save that as snapshot one. Now, I definitely think we need to go black and white. So I'm going to retain all the settings I have here, hit the V key, and that's going to take us, in, oh, instantly, wow, that is totally where it's happening. Um, I'm going to just bring the color temperature down just a little bit right about there, and I'm going to add a little bit more fill. Wow, and just look at that, man. That, that image has just come alive. Um, blacks, I think I'll just add a little bit more blacks. We'll kind of go about there. Clarity, I like I like what's going on with the clarity there. Um, and sharpening, I wouldn't touch. And you know, if we look at the before and after, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty radical. I mean, it's pretty awesome. Um, I might just back down the fill like just a little bit like that. <clears throat> and I think that as far as um, as far as we're concerned with black and white, um, you know, that that's actually really really very cool. Um, so I'm going to save that as snapshot number two. Um, and we will leave that like that. So those are my two edits here. This is my color edit. This is my black and white edit. Um, I think in this case, I might actually just go with the black and white as my, you know, my final edit. But, um, you know, we do have a color as well. So that's where I'm at. And let's go and see what Jared's got. And we are back, Adam. What is going on? How are you, man? I'm good. How did your uh, edit go? Did Did you like what you did? I did. I actually, it was amazing. The minute I hit the uh, the V key to get into the black and white module, I was like, "Whoa, that's what I'm talking about." Yeah, it kind of changed. So for you guys looking in, uh, on the screen right now, my colors on the left, Adam colors on the right. My black and white's on the left. Adam's is on the right. And I have to say, you want to go first or you want me to go first? <laughs> well, you're on a roll, so you might as well just keep rolling. I, I, I like I like your color edit. I do. I like I think that ours are pretty similar. I think yep. I think I pulled back further on the magenta, a little further than you pulled back cuz we know that I like the yellow feel more so well, than Go ahead. What I didn't want to do is I didn't want to completely lose the light filter. You know, and it's very easy to, you know, I mean, when you're shooting raw, you can just go into white balance and bam, you know, you've got a natural looking skin tone. But I wanted it to still look like there was that magenta cast. Sure. And and I wanted a little bit of the, when I spoke about it in mine, was I wanted a little bit more of the the white that wasn't existent, like non-existent. There was no front light. It was just down no. lights basically coming from up top and from the back. But I, th I like both edits. They're They're both very realistic type edits for what we mm -hmm. do. Uh, and I mentioned in the forum that there's a ton of over the top ones and I didn't mean over top over the top as a bad thing. I meant over the top as a cool thing because no, it's I just saw, different. Yeah, I saw some folks out there that did like these really intense like metallic like where like uh what his name what is tones? Nick? Yeah, this is Nick. Yeah, where Nick's uh, Nick's skin like almost had like a metallic like bronze look to it and I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's also some raw edits that people did. Uh, they did screen flows for, so we can see how they did it. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. So why don't you it's go ahead? And, go ahead. It's interesting too. If you look at the amp cabinet <clears throat> in yours, it's it's quite a bit darker than the one in mine. Even though you know the uh, the the white balance on yours has a much more kind of a brighter look to it. I'll ask you something. Did you use fill light? I did. That's that's the difference. Is I didn't use fill light. You use fill light, so it's it's drawing out. The cabinet. That's true, because I wanted to, to balance it off a little bit more, and you kept it more in a way that it separated it. So, I don't know. I mean, I think they're both cool. And black and white, um, I, I, I feel like yours went a little bit too far. Like, like, I like the skin tones in mine. I think that, you know, I like that kind of more silvery kind of look that, that's going on there. Right. Um, and I feel like the difference, again, is I think that you probably – pushed up more exposure where I pushed up more fill. Yeah, and, and I spoke about that. I spoke about me pushing the exposure in mine where I'm like, this is what I'm looking for. When I bump my exposure in black and white, I look to see that I just ha still have a little bit of detail left in the skin. Um, yep. And then I spoke that I lost some of the neck. It's blown out, but I didn't mind right. that as much. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I was conscientious about 
<clears throat> in both of my edits was at least allowing for the, uh, the 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 writing detail and the tuning machines to kind of still be visible, which yours are just blown out. And it's not really that critical, but I still felt that those were kind of cool. And those little Sinai you know guitar picks that he's got there, um, you know, I just like the skin tone here. I just think that it looks, you it, know, yeah, it has cool. a very a very silvery look to it. Yeah. Whereas mine is more of like a straight contrast, black and white. Uh, yeah, just yeah. To the extreme. I mean, your yours definitely pops. It's definitely in your style. Um, but you know, I would say like out of any of these edits, I, I like them all. Like, there's not any one that's like, eh. Yeah. They're all they're all really solid. I definitely agree with that. I think that it, the, this photo, it's so interesting to see how many different ways you can make this one photo. And I just I'm really happy with what everybody's been able to do, and we'll be making a video to show that. Right. I mean, right. his stance, his body language, the way the guitar kind of... The geometry between his body and the guitar is just sensational. So the moment is great. It definitely makes for a great, great ride. You know what's interesting? It's it's also the uh, the monitor, too. The way that his knee and, 100%. and shin is lining up with the monitor, it's kind of I like... I addressed that in my video. Okay. Yeah, because I think that that's just great. They just mirror each other, and his other leg kind of... It just all of the geometry that's going on between the shapes that are on the stage, him and his guitar are just really, really super cool. Yeah, and it's just amazing the detail that you maintain at 8,000 ISO. <laughs> just Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just what's there. It's just the amount of data that is stored in that file is, is yeah. incredible. So sure. no, I, I think these are all all solid edits, and, and, and that's really cool. Definitely. Okay, so... Yeah, this Good was week stuff, 50. Yeah. We're coming up on a year. That's incredible. That these have been going on. That's uh that is <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty uh that's a lot of dedication to have something that goes on for a year. But and and stays stays fresh. I mean, this, you know, this is an exciting thing and it's great to see all of the reader um participation that it seems like the evolution on the and the end of the readers as far as the level of their editing the fact that people are doing screen flows, the fact that people are trying things that are trying artistic things. I mean, you know, looking through the forum, I'm so impressed with with what people are bringing to the table. Yeah, and that's a, gr a big change that happened a couple weeks ago when we flipped the switch and let everybody edit first and then we edit second so that everybody can show what they want to do and not be afraid to do anything. Because you shouldn't be afraid to do any type of edit that you really want to because there is, again, no right or wrong way to do things. Um, sure. You know, there's a lot of photographers out there that like to try to tell you that you know you have to do it their way that it's a definitive there are no definitives here if you like it it feels good to you right then that's all that matters <laughs> you know it's funny the more i look at this photograph the guy sitting um back on the drum riser who's like chimping on his camera yep <laughs> he's like missing this incredibly epic moment but hopefully he's got something good no he has nothing good and i ripped on him in my video <laughs> because we didn't get along we had words we no. had words because there were he, it was a monster energy drink show. So it was the monster showcase and they had right. monster cans he had placed on the front of the stage. No. And I I moved them and I'm shoot we're shooting right. with Robert Knight in the pit, right? Robert Knight, guy who toured with yeah. Led Zeppelin, the guy who, you know, has shot everybody from the seventies on. And I just sat there and I'm like, Yeah, I'm gonna move these cans and the guy yelled at me, I need those in the front. I'm like, No. I'm like, I don't need them in the front. Go, I, I, I don't want to say it, you know, but I wasn't right. too happy with this guy and he's running around the stage and we actually got him removed from the stage by the security guards because Robert and I nice. talked nicely to the security guards and this is a guy, see, I always say that, talk to the security guard, so it happened to be one security guard was a fro reader, by the way. Gotta love that. Got, gotta love that. So I gave him some stickers. He was all happy. And we were just, yeah, man. you know, we were powwowing with the security. This guy. You take care of the security guard, they'll take care of you, man. You offer to get him a drink. All the time. You know, you stay out of their way. You listen to their rules and you abide by them. And I'm telling you, you have no problems. Well, and what I'm going to say is that this guy did not talk to the security guards. That's right. why they pulled him They pulled him out of there, even though he was shooting for monster, quote unquote, holding his <laughs> camera up, just snapping pictures willy nilly. Um, they removed right. him from the stage. And that was great because it did, we did not want to. He was in the background. That, that's bad. It's just bad. I, so he got removed. <laughs> we got our shots. <clears throat> and hey, that's it. Don't don't upset the other photographers. 
No. I mean, it's, you know, we're all in it for the same reason. Yep. And don't. Yeah, that whole putting the can in the front of the stage so it was at everybody's foot. I was like, screw this. And I moved it. And, and, and you know, it's funny because I've also been at shows before and, and even like a smaller club date. And I'll even like, if the lights are low enough, man, I'll refocus them on the musicians. Uh, wow. You know? Yeah, I've That's done cool. that, you know? And because, you know, sometimes like when there's a lot of turnover in a club, the sound guy is also the guy who's dealing with lighting. He doesn't give a crap, man. He's just like, whatever. I'm yeah. doing seven bands tonight. But, um, you know, sometimes you just have to get involved. And if you see an obstacle that's going to ruin your shot that has no context, just deal with it. it. That happens all the time if, like, a water bottle or a beer bottle. Like, the beer bottles I don't mind because that's part of it. But a water bottle, right. you know, right. that's just kind of in the way and distracting. So why don't we uh, why don't we wrap, wrap it, it up. up and one day pick it up in a podcast when we finally get it going? All right. Sounds good. Sound good? All right, Adam, thank yeah. you for your edits, man. Thanks, man. All right, everybody, thank you for all your edits as well, and and, and look forward uh, to a video showcasing some of the coolest raw edits of the week, number 50. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!